Welcome back to another episode of One Wing Span Above, where we discuss anything to do with ground effects. My name is Paul Dutch. Today we'll cover some amazing developments in the military world of skin machines. Since the Cold War, when Russia came up with the Akrona plants, it has been reasonably quiet on the development of skin machines for defense purposes. One recent development was from DARPA, the Pentagon's R&D branch, called the Liberty Lifter. A project that was so heavy on the concept drawings and light on details that it was hard to take seriously. We have since learned that this project has been cancelled and we'll discuss this one next. But since then there were a few photos that surfaced that were made in China. The photos are of a mysterious Chinese military plane that was spotted in the Bohai Sea, reportedly undergoing testing. The Boha Sea is a semi-enclosed northwestern section of the Yellow Sea. Dubbed the Bohai Sea Monster by aviation analysts, the plane was seen floating on blue waters. Another picture showed the craft partly covered at a naval pier. The vehicle seems to have a boat-shaped fuselage and joins a V-shaped tail. It is feared it could be used in any potential military operations against Taiwan in the future. Development and design of skin machines in China was started in the China Ship Scientific Research Center, or CSSRC, in 1967. But since then, during more than 30 years, a total of nine small man test vehicles have been designed and tested on lakes and in coastal waters. The XTW series was based on a wing tail configuration, with the main wing having forward sweep as in Lippisch designs. In 1996, the CSSRC reported developing the XTW2, 3 and 4 ground effect craft. The typical craft of this series is the XTW4, which is slightly modified from the XTW2 to comply with specific requirements from sea trials. This 20 passenger skim machine was first tested on the Shangshan River in the autumn of 1999. The vehicle comprises a major hull, the main wing supported by two minor floats and two vertical stabilizers carrying a high mounted tailplane. The main wing features the forward sweep, reminiscent of the Lippisch Delta Wing concept. Two turboprop engines with five bladed adjustable pitch propellers are mounted at the leading edge of the main wing. Then in 2010, a skim machine called it Angel Bird flies over water during trial flights in Nanjing, East China's Qingzhou province, April 23rd. China's most recent ground effect vehicle, Xiangyou 1, made its first flight in Sanya in December 2017. It seems that the craft that has been spotted now is an enlarged version of the XTW 4 with four turboprops on top, more in the style of the Angel Bird and the Xiangyou one. From these photos, nothing really can be said, but I'm sure that other photos will surface very soon. What is your take? Let us know in the comments. As mentioned before, uh, DARPA has officially canceled the Liberty Lifter Ringing Ground Effect Cargo Aircraft Program. The announcement came this June, after nearly three years of research and development. Let's unpack what this means. The Liberty Lifter aimed to be a revolutionary heavy lift seaplane. DARPA partnered with Aurora Flight Sciences, part of Boeing, to build a craft the size of the C-130 Hercules, capable of carrying 90 tons or six shipping containers. It was to operate in rough seas, waves up to 4 meters, and even climb to 3,000 meters altitude when needed. According to DARPA, the program demonstrated technical feasibility via simulation and scale model testing years ahead of schedule. They also proved novel manufacturing methods using maritime composites, but building a full-scale demonstrator was deemed unnecessary and too costly. DARPA's switch now is to pivot towards transitioning the tech, not building a plane. DARPA program manager Christopher Kent said, we can build a flying boat capable of takeoff and landing in high sea states. The physics makes sense. 
Now DARPA intends to share findings with the DoD and industry to rapidly field new platforms based on these breakthroughs. But what about cost? DARPA invested around 98 million US dollars in Liberty Lifter before cancelling it. Economic pressures and shifting priorities likely influence the decision to reallocate funds. So what is next? The legacy of the Liberty Lifter lies in ground effect and maritime composite tech. It may be used in future military transport or humanitarian delivery platforms and possibly even civilian ferries. The bottom line though is that DARPA and the Liberty Lifter early, not because it failed fundamentally, but because it succeeded enough to stop building and start transitioning. They've proven the concept, now the mission is to spin those lessons out into real world systems, faster and cheaper than ever. What is your take? Is it a smart pivot or a missed opportunity for a bold transport plane? Another major development in US defense technology is that on July the 16th, at the Reindustrialized Summit in Detroit, Region Craft officially announced the launch of a new military focused division, Regent Defense. This isn't just a branding shift, it's a strategic response to rising geopolitical tensions, particularly in the Indo Pacific. As the US looks to counter threats in places like the South China Sea, there's an urgent need for fast, efficient and scalable mobility across far stretches of contested coastal waters. Region believes its new class of sea gliders can fill that gap, offering a breakthrough platform for 21st century maritime operations. The Region Defense announcement introduced three distinct sea glider configurations each tailored to specific mission profiles. First, there's the crewed Viceroy model, fully electric, capable of carrying up to almost 1600 kilograms of payload at speeds of 300 kilometers per hour, with a range of about 300 kilometers, or a staggering 2600 kilometers when equipped with a hybrid power system. Next is the fully autonomous Viceroy, optimized for unmanned missions in logistics, ISR, and coastal surveillance. And finally, there's the Squire, a smaller, agile, uncrewed craft designed for lighter payloads, up to 23 kilograms, with a top speed of 130 kilometers per hour, and a range of around 185 kilometers. Each platform is purpose-built for modularity and rapid deployment offering mission flexibility across a wide range of defense scenarios. These military sea gliders are being developed with direct input from defense agencies and are intended to solve real-world operational challenges. Their speed and low signature make them ideal for rapid troop and supply transport, medical evacuations, intelligence and surveillance operations, and even as launch platforms for other unmanned systems. Unlike conventional vessels, sea gliders can move over water at aircraft-like speeds while staying under the radar, literally. This makes them extremely hard to detect and target, a huge advantage in contested, literal zones where traditional platforms are too slow, too visible and too expensive to risk. For nations focused on distributed maritime operations, this is a game-changing approach. As we know, Regent isn't just designing these craft, they're building them in the United States. Their new production facility in Rhode Island spans over 24,000 square meters and is being scaled up now with delivery of operational sea glider units scheduled for 2026. This isn't a decades long development cycle, it's happening now. Region's commitment to domestic manufacturing aligns with broader efforts to reindustrialize and strengthen US defense supply chains. In a climate where speed and autonomy are becoming essential features of future warfare, having production ready homegrown platforms is both a strategic and economic win. What really underscores the seriousness of this announcement is the caliber of Region's defense partners. They've already secured a 10 million plus contract with the US Marine Corps Warfighting Lab 
to explore deployment scenarios and conduct trials. They're also collaborating with U.S. Special Operations Command and the U.S. Coast Guard Research and Development Center, indicating cross-branch interest in what sea gliders can do. This isn't speculation. It's a live-funded initiative with real-world backing. Region Defense has stepped into the spotlight at a time when innovation in coastal mobility is critical. Let me know in the comments. Do you think that sea gliders will redefine littoral warfare? For now, thank you for watching. Keep in the loop by hitting the subscribe button, and we'll see you here for the next episode of One Wingspan Above. Keep on skimming.